any fiscal court. I don't see nobody standing clapping. <laughs> All right, here we go. Looks like everything's going. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming this morning. I see the mayor sitting in the back. It's always good to see him here. We appreciate it, Steve. And at this time, I'd like to call the meeting of the Madison County Physical Court to order. Kenny? Master King? Here. Master Barger? Here. Master Hughes? Here. Master Combs? Here. Judge Clark? Here. Uh, you all have had a chance to look at the minutes of the last meeting. If there's no uh, changes or discussion, a motion would be in order to approve those as submitted in your packets. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, Treasurer's report, uh, Glenna is really busy today and couldn't come over, but she gave a report the last meeting, and uh, we, uh, she's really intense on getting the budget finalized and also working towards the uh, new enrollment uh, health insurance so uh, she's not going to be here today but uh, you all can call her if anybody has any questions for her. Uh, before we get started i'd like to amend the agenda just a little bit first as i said glenn is working on open enrollment and insurance and the budget uh, the clerk's claim for calculation of motor vehicle bills, resolution 0712, pay resolution for the CDBG food bank. And they just brought that in yesterday, so we didn't have a chance to really get it on the agenda. And I'd like to strike personnel, Madison County Road Department, because Leroy really uh, doesn't have anybody to hire at this time on a full time basis. So if that's okay with everybody, I don't think we need a motion. Just is everybody okay with that? If not, we'll go on and uh, get the meeting started. As always, uh, first, we've got appointments to the, uh, now let's let Scott, is Scott here? Scott, you wanna give your yearly report? <coughs> Morning, everybody. I'm gonna go over our first quarter plus April. Uh, I wasn't able to make last court report to just do the uh, first quarter, so I went ahead and threw April statistics and data in there for everyone to enjoy. Uh, we'll start out with our spring cleanup this year. Uh, the spring cleanup, we netted 261 miles of county roads. Uh, that brought in 1,425 bags of litter. Uh, 543 people participated in this and 249 man hours logged. So. Obviously, we pulled that many bags of litter off our off our county roadways. Lona trucks. Quickly go through this. Our Lona trucks were set uh, at 63 locations during the first quarter plus April of 2012. Uh, that's 60 seat, 63 residences that uh, cleaned out that garage or cleaned out that basement. Great service and uh, obviously benefit. Uh, NOVs have issued seven notices of violation. Uh, that's an old photo of a roadside dump. Seems to be a, something very common uh, lately when I issue NOV uh, as of late. It seems like these past three or four I've been sent out, I've gotten no response on. Seems to be people moving, uh, move from one apartment to another, tracking them down, uh, almost impossible, but still we send out a, a nasty gram saying, hey, we found your trash on the side of the road. Please uh, take care of it. But uh, uh, we cleaned them up and went on. Large item pickup, uh, our pickups netted. We did 113 scheduled pickups. That's when people call in and they request large item pickup, that basketball go, that couch, that sectional that you need to have picked up. We go out and do that. Uh, during the time span, we have replaced and delivered 54 recycle bins. It's probably more uh, replacements than it was new ones uh, and cleaned up eight roadside dumps. Uh, I'll touch on a cleanup that we did out in the Idlewild subdivision area. Um, the storm drains that eject from Hampton Way, uh, City of Richmond streets, uh, they eject in, in the backside of Idlewild in a collection pond. Uh, if you see a photo of that's uh, coming from Hampton Way, it's a cleanup. Uh, worked with the city, they've started some uh, enforcement on the streets of Hampton Way. Uh, we've got it cleaned up and I'm monitoring the situation now. Uh, there's a before. And there's an after photo after we got in there and cleaned it up. We netted about 66 bags of trash pulled out of that one site. Basically, you could say it was a collection point from the litter and debris coming off that city street. And uh, we'll continue to monitor it and uh, keep track on it. Uh, 
Scott, isn't this part of the watershed that goes into Will Green Lake? That is correct, Judge. That is so important. very important watershed heading straight into Will Green Lake. So uh, it's a this is a natural collection point. It's a <coughs> drain retention pond. It fills up, literal float on it, and then, you know, as it goes down, we'll, we'll deposit there. Uh, you using prisoners to clean these up, Scott? Uh, we, my staff and I spent some time on cleaning it up, but then I went ahead and used some litter abatement contract money to hire an individuals to go ahead and go in there and clean that up, Larry. Um, it ended up being a lot bigger job than I anticipated when we got in there and, and spent three hours and hardly made a dent into it. Uh, so we went ahead and, and that's what the litter abatement money is for and we can use it for. So <coughs> litter's one way if it's on a roadside or if it's in a drainage ditch. So. But good and cleaned up now. Uh, talk about neighborhood recycling program. Looks like 295,000 pounds this so far in, in 2012. Uh, if you look at the statistics and the data in 2011, we're about 23% increase on recycling this uh, this span. So obviously that we added a few more neighborhoods in the program, and so they're making a difference. Uh, livestock removal service January 84, February 157. March 170, April 186. It's been a busy four months on dead animal removal. Uh, that's 597 total, 35 average for the week. Usually we are at about a 25 average for the week. So uh, I would like to chalk that up probably to our strange weather pattern this year. Scott, you might mention that you, you'll be meeting, and I've talked with the uh, back one settlement mm -hmm. committee in, in Madison County. <laughs> Next year will be probably phasing out of the tobacco one money, but they're all very much interested in looking and applying for the money to, as they did the first one, to uh, maybe help us get a new truck. Exactly. I uh, mean, so we don't have to contract this out. We can continue to provide this free service as the only county in the state of Kentucky that does that. Uh, so it's very interesting but I've talked to several of them and I know you're going to go speak to them and show them the numbers but uh, it's it's very likely that they're going to be able to get us some money so we can get a new truck because this is an invaluable service I mean just you, you can look and see I mean 597 head in four months and those would be laying on the back of a hill somewhere or on the side of the road so it's uh, something that we want to try to continue and work together. And uh, it costs us money, but I think that it's money well spent as far as the environment and, and cleaning up the creeks and rivers. Yeah, we are meeting this Thursday at 530 at the uh, Extension Agents. Extension Agents. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Uh, upcoming <coughs> our department. This, uh, this year marks the time that I have to uh, update our five-year solid waste plan. Uh, I will be meeting with that shortly here and getting on, getting the advisory committee formed and starting meetings and doing the updates to the plan. Uh, just recently applied for a $50,000 recycling grant. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to pan out. I'll know more about that here in the, probably about the next month or so, if that's going to pan out for us or not at the state level. That, that grant comes from Division of Waste Management and the money that they send out for recycling grants. Uh, household hazardous waste collection event we're going to schedule that for october 6th that's first saturday in october so we'll do our usual fall haul stuff if you got that hazardous waste that uh <coughs> oil-based paint or that bottle of mercury you might be hanging on to or some cfl light bulbs that's the day we'll get rid of that stuff so uh one one upcoming thing the recycled truck i just checked on it last week uh, the truck we ordered last earlier this spring will should target delivery date should be June 18th. So we'll be fully taking the program off, right, taking the program over after after it gets here. So, and last but not surely, uh, Kentucky River Sweep is scheduled for June 16th. Uh, I invite you all to come on down. It'll be from 9 to 2 p.m. There'll be T-shirts and uh, free lunch for every <coughs> participant. So come on down and helpful clean up the river down at Boonesboro. Uh, one last thing, I had to throw this in here. This is me and Miss Ginner uh, with Laney Smith. That's the Earth Man. Uh, he has performed for three of our schools here in Madison County: uh, Waco, Whitehall, and Glen Marshall Elementary. He's a uh, na nationally renowned environmental performer. He he did a message about anti-littering, recycling, and just being a good steward of the Earth. 
uh, excellent program. Look forward to looking, working with him more in the future and uh, getting more involved with our schools here. So excellent performance. Any questions? Got a couple of big dumps we're trying to get some help with and get cleaned up. That is correct. We're working on a couple of dumps. Uh, one of them was actually cleaned up yesterday. I've had them ID'd with the state. So whenever we go to uh, contract them out to be cleaned up, we'll be able to uh, recoup 75% of the cost. Win-win situation gets rid of them in the county. And uh, obviously, yeah, good for everything. Good deal, Scott. Did you get any names out of you? Do what, sir? Did you get any names out of that one? They're old traditional road. They're not road signs. Some of them have been identified on private property. Unfortunately, we do have a few of these still laying around in the county. Uh, just uh, bad choices by property owners, I would account for. And some have been inherited. Older people come in and bought property and yeah. not really worried about it. But uh, <coughs> Scott's doing a great job getting all these cleaned up. Hopefully, we won't have any more eventually. Thank you all. Thanks, Scott. Okay, next is uh, reappointments. We had appointments on here, but it's reappointments to the Northern Madison County Sanitation District. Uh, we've got two, Marcella Hayden, other one's Johnny Webb. You know, and this is, it's a very interesting scenario because the, the North Sanitation District was really the Madison Village Sanitation District. They were the only ones that had a package plan out there, and Jim Rowe, got people together and some of these people got involved and uh, they worked with me and uh, 19 years ago the first grant we got from Brereton Jones was to put a new package plan into Madison Village and since then we've put all that online and it's regionalized but uh, these people you know and they they don't get paid and they come in and they work the meetings and they stay because they're involved in their community and uh, it this time I'm just glad they're staying because of their experience but at this time I'd like the court's permission to reappoint uh, Marcella Hayden with a time that will expire January 23rd of 2014. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. <clears throat> Other individuals Johnny Webb. Johnny's another one that really takes an interest in this. Uh, takes a little heat with what's gone on out there, but I think uh, long range it'll be the greatest thing that's ever happened for not only the North End, but the whole county. So I'd like the court's permission to reappoint uh, Johnny Webb to the Madison County Sanitation District. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, at this time, we can do Kenny, I'm going to let you talk about this. This clerk's claim for calculation of motor vehicle bills, resolution 712. Well, is this for vehicle and boat bills? I yeah, that's for, that's for all vehicles in the county. I know, didn't it come in? All more, vehicles licensed. In more the than county. expected. A little bit higher, but it's more of a, it's kind of a swap between physical court and our office again. You know, you guys. Okay. You guys pay us this. We're going end of the term. We're going to hand that and more back to you. It's but it's for every vehicle license in the county. It's I think seventeen cents. Is that correct? Okay. So I, I think 15, we still need a motion 15, on this. Fifteen, 15 as, cents. As far as the uh, the calculation of the vehicle and boat bills. So moved. Is, that, is, it, is this ahead. something new that's coming? Mm -mm. No. It's just it's. A little different. Okay. Play we're trading now. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Next was the resolution that we just got, uh, Francette just got yesterday, and that'd be resolution 712, and it's a pay resolution for the CDBG, uh, God's Pantry Food Bank, and this was for Ready Mix Concrete and uh, Richmond Electric Supply. For a total of ten thousand two hundred ninety-five dollars and twenty-two cents, uh, I think everything's on the up and up. It looks like they're getting ready. To, they're getting their kitchen stocked and getting the food in. So I think they're going to be really close to uh, opening. 
I didn't get a chance to talk to Brian Francette. Did you as far as the grand opening? <coughs> the uh, motion will be in order to approve uh, resolution 712 for the community development block grant food grant. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Mr. Park? Yes. Uh, next, I'd like the court's permission to allow Leroy to advertise for the uh, rock, gas, oil, and culvert bids. As you all know, we do this each and every year. Uh, it's just kind of usually keep the same people, but uh, we always do it this way, and uh, I'd like the court permission to allow Leroy to go on and get that done and have it ready for our next meeting. So moved. Thank <coughs> Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, judge's report have a few things. Uh, something very exciting. KET came over and did Kentucky Life features the Battle of Richmond and what everybody's done, what everybody's been involved with. And they did a, a videotape of it, and that's they're going to have a reception at 630 at at Acres of Land Winery. And the kind of the kick off the video and stuff will be at seven o'clock, <coughs> and uh, we'd like to invite everybody to come out there. Uh, it's about a six thirty to seven reception, seven to seven thirty showing of the documentary, uh, and it's very interesting, really. Is Philip and his staff did an excellent job working with them, and they kind of tell what what happened and what we've been through to secure 600 acres of land of the original Battle of Richmond. So we'd like to invite everybody out there. Um, and like I said, it's May 10th on Thursday uh, from 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, the Richmond Chamber State of the County address will be Friday, May 18th. And we're gonna have that at the Armed Services Center there on Battlefield Memorial Highway and uh, I'll be speaking, so I really don't expect a whole lot of you to come. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you hear me once, you've heard me a thousand times. But seriously, we'd like to invite everybody to come out. It's a joint chamber. Uh, the joint chamber just has about three of these a year, and uh, we, we really get big crowds and just kind of bring you up to date on what's going on in the county. and. Uh, what our departments are, are doing and, and projects that are happening, projects that are projected. Uh, as you all know, we've been very fortunate. We had a lot of projects that have been in the six-year road plan and got them funded this time. And so I'm going to be bragging not, on Ed, not only on Ed and Harry because they got most of them in, but uh, Rita Smart and Lonnie Napier and Jared Carpenter who really helped us get these things funded. So I'll be talking about that. And some of the things that we're looking at in the, in the five, 10 year range as far as uh, upgrading services to the county. So we hope everybody can come out to that. Uh, I really enjoy seeing a big crowd. It, uh, it helps the chambers and uh, just makes a good deal. Next court will be Tuesday, May 22nd in Richmond. Uh, we will be handing out our first reading of the budget, and uh, it's a good budget. It's, uh, we've continued to cut a little bit. We've balanced every department, all 13 departments have balanced for this year, and we think we're going to continue to do that. So it's uh, going to be a, another good budget for fiscal court and residents of the county. And finally, I know we've, we've talked about it a couple times, but uh, Relay for Life is uh, this coming weekend. And uh, got Lisa and Nola, they all put so much into this. And we hope that everybody remembers and can come out. And you don't have to stay all night. You don't have to walk all night. If you just come out and show support. Uh, Judge, uh, I'm sorry, this is the actual kickoff. Is it the kickoff? The kickoff, and then the actual event is June the 15th, I think. Yeah, okay, June. I apologize. Yeah, but th this, uh, a week from this Friday is when they have the kickoff, just to go ahead and try to start raising some awareness for the event in okay. June. Uh, people that have teams can come out and try to raise a little money and, and kind of focus on the event. It's going to be at the courthouse. There's live music and uh, yeah, we do the proclamation and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly, okay. that's what it is. All right. right, and then I'm not going to talk about the flower because I think I'm sure Roger wants to talk about that. I talked well, to Harold the other day. Yeah. 
so I let him do that, but it was a huge success. And that's really all I have in my judge's report. Uh, I'd ask for comments from judge, department heads. 911, we're going to speak. It's on the agenda there, and you missed it. I missed it. it. Oh, upgrades for the Chris, beats. you and Wendy, let's do the award on the CAD upgrades. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Everybody's aware of the uh, the, big, the two big projects going on at 911, the PSAP upgrade and then the CAD upgrade to meet the new requirements for 911 centers to be next-gen compliant and then to be CMRS compliant, that kind of stuff. In order to do that, we have to upgrade all of our equipment. Uh, CAD servers have to be replaced, the software upgraded, and then the PSAP. Um, what we put bids out for was what we're deeming is called the pre-CAD. It's going to replace all of the desktops that are used in 911 for each of the dispatchers. Um, we're going to take the same route we took with the clerk's office and virtualize those desktops with the thin clients. The same thing EMA just did with theirs. Uh, so I ran this out in the paper uh, for the required amount of days, received them back. We opened them yesterday with uh, Kenny Barger in his office. They all were sealed and received on time. Uh, we did it on a line item, line item basis so that we can award each line item to a different company based on their price. Um, so here we have CDWG being awarded the secondary monitors, the Microsoft licensing, the server licensing, and the user cows from Microsoft. Uh, Pomeroy will be receiving the bid for the VMware licensing and support, the VMware view licensing support, the network switching, and they will be awarded the server. And GovConnect, which is a new partner, we've never bought anything from them. Uh, Wendy found them through, I guess, CMRS meetings they mm -hmm. uh, showed up. So uh, they submitted a bid. They'll be winning the network attached storage, the hard drives, and the actual thin clients themselves. Uh, it actually worked out. Everybody got about four pieces of equipment off the bid. So everybody kind of got a piece of the pie there. That's what it looks like. And as always, bidding it out has saved quite a bit of money. My projected numbers were 46000 And with all of these spread out, it came in at 39900 so it saved us quite a bit of money. There was uh, the biggest item is the server. Pomeroy was able to sell it for eighteen five instead of twenty four thousand. So that's where most of the cost saving is. I'd like to go ahead and award those. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the purchase order wrote for tomorrow. Um, the hard drives and stuff are on an industry constraint, which means they're probably four to five weeks for delivery. So we're going to go ahead and get those things ordered so they can process through there. Um, and all the money is being handled and taken care of. So it's all there, and we'll just proceed forward. And I'd like to thank uh, the newly elected 911 board president, Buzzy Campbell, for coming today and showing his support, and, and also Wendy coming as well. So uh, that's what we got going on right now, and we'll go ahead and get this stuff on order. Get it. Yeah. Or let me pay that, love, Judge. This will be paid. Berea had a balance on their contribution to 911, and I've talked to Randy, and he's going to make sure that they get it before July 1st. 911's got a little bit of money in the bank, so we have the funds to pay for this. This will be the first phase of the whole new telephone system and new CAD system, Larry, which we've talked about, and, and Carl's been able to secure up to 400,000 match. And uh, we are working with the other two governments. It'll be a, a joint operation as far as a loan to do the CAD, which is about 225,000. And then we're looking at about a $750,000 radio system. So this is something that we've been working on. You all are aware of it. Uh, we've met and already made application for the money. And this is the first phase that really needs to get in as far as the CAD upgrade to get things started. But they're going to have the money with the uh, contribution from Berea. Will all that money have to be paid up front when we order? Well, we're going to borrow the money. The federal government's going to pay on the radio system. They can't. Carl has worked with FEMA through Atlanta and Washington, and because of the 911 service and operating the 24 7, he's been able to secure up to 400,000 in match. So we're probably looking at about 375,000 match from the federal government, and then we're going to borrow the rest. Uh, looks like on a four-year term and pay it off with the three government equal payments amongst all three governments. Well, I think Bria really, I mean, they're actually putting in two years because they was actually behind, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. That's all I want to know. But it was just, uh, it was a lack of request, and Randy and Steve, we've met, and they're fine with it. Everything's cool. So uh, they're doing exactly what we all agreed to do. So there's no problem whatsoever. And this money will allow them to go on and get their pre-CAD equipment in, and then we can roll with it. But it's, it's 
just it's so important that we go on and get started on this project you want a motion yes sir Please. so move Tech. master king yes master barger yes master hughes yes master cole yes judge clark yes thanks chris thanks wendy i know y'all going through a lot of <laughs> tough times but uh everything's rolling smooth right now i'm buzzy Thank you for coming in. Buzzy's our new chairman of the 911 board, and uh, we look forward to working with you. You've, you're like the rest of us. You've been around a long time, and you're very much aware of what's going on, so we appreciate you coming over. We really do. Then uh, I think comments from department heads. We just heard from Chris. Any? I got something, Ken. Okay. <clears throat> Did you get the contract on the home incarceration? I haven't got it yet, Mark. Have you sent it over to me? Yeah, um, it's due Thursday. Is it there? Okay, I've got it. We need to get that signed so we can move on on that. The other thing is... Uh, signed the contract, I know, it. I've already signed it, Jerry, and sent it in. Okay. The other thing is that... Uh, Prior to me taking office in uh, January 3rd, 2011, we've went through several lawsuits. And uh, now I'm being asked to pay retirement on two individuals that are employed by me. And if they're not paid, then they're going to sue me. The agreement I had made with Jeff Mando and uh, Keiko and everybody else was that I would reinstate them back. They asked me to reinstate them back to their uh, time when they was terminated by Nelson O'Donnell back in May of 2010. Uh, I did that. They asked me to raise the pay back to where they was in 2010. I've done that. The problem we get into now is that the uh, retirement has not been paid in. And so we anticipate probably a lawsuit coming on that. I don't think I'm obligated to pay it. Uh, my attorney says I'm not. Uh, everybody keeps saying, well, you need to work with Keiko in the fiscal court. And uh, that's kind of where I stand right now. I don't have the money to pay these two individuals. How much are you Well, they're calculating right now. It could run anywhere from forty to $80,000 for two employees. It has to do with both of them. And that's only two that's asking for it. Uh, not only when Nolan Winkler Jr. is not asking for anything, and neither is uh, Randy Worley, but the other two are. And uh, so I just want to kind of update you on that and see if there's anything that the court feels have like. Have the other two retired, Jerry? Uh, Worley has. No, the two that that's in question right now? Yeah. No, that's uh, Evelyn Thomas and Derek Thomas. They both still work for me. So, so they're asking when the previous sheriff laid them off after terminated them, terminated them after the May election. Then they're asking for six months of their hazardous duties of retirement that wasn't. Well, paid. actually, it comes out to about 11 total months, Ken. I don't know how they calculate that. Keiko asked me to submit what their pay scale was at that time, which I did. Uh, all their benefits and everything were submitted to Keiko, and it's my understanding that Keiko was going to take care of it. Their attorney is Mr. J.T. Gilbert, and Mr. Gilbert says that uh, somebody has to pay that. Evelyn can retire within four or five months, but she can't unless her retirement's paid in. And that's kind of where I stand. Uh, and Mark, in the settlement with the four individuals that were terminated, uh, the retirement wasn't addressed because I wasn't involved in that. Judge, ra rather than shoot off the hip, let me pull the file and make sure that, okay. I, that I give the court the exact information because, quite frankly, the court, I don't think, anticipated this issue this morning. I certainly didn't, I, and I think I, that we need to address that rather than just, uh, again, Okay, because I was under like under the understanding there. that the, the, the settlement that they received included the back pay and included... I don't like, think the, so. ...the yeah. lost... Lost wages, lost benefits. 
know Glenn has worked on this too, so maybe we can all get together and look at it again. But we're going to have to pull that file because that's been a long time ago. Okay. Do you think maybe this court might get an update on how much money has been paid out? I'd like to know a little more about it. I haven't been told anything. I mean, is that a matter of uh, record? Uh, again, I'm not exactly certain because it's been so long since the case was settled. Uh, it wasn't an issue that was on the agenda today, so we'll look at it and certainly see. Well, I sure like to know. I mean, I, you know. Well, it's just brought to my light uh, last Friday, and I haven't had a lot of time to work on it, but. Uh, their attorney uh, would like something done in the next seven days. Or it's, pro it's probably nothing that needs to be addressed any further at this point in time until we all look at it, see exactly where we are in the case, and then proceed from there. That's fine with me. I just, I just want to make a point that it wasn't my fault that this happened. Number one, and uh, I coming in, I had no idea I was going to have all these lawsuits, and. Uh, you know, it's been an inconvenience to me and my department to move forward with all the compensation that had to be made on some employees that left on their seat time. And uh, it's cost us dearly. And it's it's been tough for us. And we're trying to do the best that we can with what we got. I already have one alternative. If, um, if the money comes from the Sheriff's Department, we'll have to eliminate a shift. We don't have any choice. Let's go ahead and pull the okay. file. Jerry, we'll, we'll, let's pull, let Mark look at it and talk to the attorneys. Let's not drag our feet on it. <clears throat> now, I, uh, Mr. Gilbert has told me that he, he expects something to be done in the next seven to nine days. Well, I, I, you know, I don't think we can bring it up one day and then demand something in five to seven days. So well, well, let Mark look it up and okay. let's research it and then see who exactly is responsible for it, Jerry. How long has this been going on, Jerry? <clears throat> I don't want to talk about it. I mean, when were you made aware of the retirement that was due, Jerry? The letter I received from Mr. Gilbert came on uh, about eight days ago, I guess. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sure Mark can, can talk to Mr. Gilbert and we can work some arrangements out to find out exactly where the money needs to come from. Okay, into the department heads. I'd like to mention, Judge, that we're uh, we're about 40 short on precinct officers for this coming up May primary. One of the main reasons is the uh, in-service school is going to be in service that day, so we have a lot of school teachers and, uh, and other employees for the county that usually work and can't this time. So if anybody out there knows of someone that would uh, like to work the 22nd, we're having a make-up election school on the 14th of this month at 6 o'clock in the physical courtroom at the courthouse. Or you can call the office at 624-4703 and make other arrangements. Did you say 40? 40. It's critical. We're yeah. You need how many? 100. Oh, no, it's three. 300. 328, I think, minimum. You can't use an independent on the Democrat or Republicans, I can to save time. We can, but it has to be approved by the state board. Just like we can use a Democrat to replace a Republican or vice versa if... The situation's dire enough. They want it to be even as possible, but they also understand that the situation the counties are in trying to recruit people to work, work these legs. So, yeah, the answer is yes. The short right. answer. And we do pay, and we will pay. Hundred twenty-five dollars. <laughs> One twenty-five. So it's uh, any of you out there? Uh, any other department heads? If not, uh, magistrates, Greg, you got anything today? Everything's going good, seem to be. So I'm just glad to be here. Roger. As the judge mentioned, the uh, Butcher Family Flyer Sale uh, had good weather, and that was a big help. Two days of good weather, and usually one of the days it'll rain on us, but it didn't, so that, that helped us in our sales. And I was really surprised because of the economy. I just didn't think that the flyer sale would do as good this year. I predicted that this would be the first year that we'd lost. Uh, as far as our total sales, but uh, our best year so far had been 29,000 something. We did 30,000 and 100 dollars, and uh, that's good. But as anybody that's ever been in business knows, you can do more money in these times and still not make as much money. You know, your bottom dollar is is, is less. But we don't know that figure yet. They may know it, and I, I don't I haven't been told. But 
if we can clear 20% of that, we've done pretty good. So time we pay for the flyers, and what surprises me about all this is uh, somebody that's in this business, uh, if they did $30,000 and did it in two days, and they had to pay for everything that we didn't have to pay for, they wouldn't make a dime because we had 20-some people volunteer to work it. We get a forklift furnished to us, grocery carts are furnished to us by the local merchants, and that's all That's all part of it. They, they do their part by donating these things, and uh, it turns out good. But this is the uh, 13th year of it. Uh, the family is just dedicated to raise this money for cancer just because their their family has lost so many to cancer. But it's been a great thing, and uh, it's kind of inspired all of them to keep it going at one time. A couple of years ago, we thought about not doing it anymore, but we're glad we're hanging in there. Other than that, everything's okay. Thanks, Roger. Uh, Bill Ray? Well, talking about that plant sale, it, it is a big event. You, I drove Every time I drove by, there's a huge crowd there. It's organized so very well. It's a... I really respect and admire the family for, for stepping up and doing that because it is great well, service. Well, I'll tell you, I was out of town Saturday because I wanted to go out and I told Francette to call and she called Harold and he brought me a truckload of stuff on Monday. <laughs> sure did and said it was very successful and they were all tickled to death. Yeah. Larry? Uh, Judge, I guess I'm just glad to be here. I don't need to ask any more questions, don't guess. Can't get many answers. All right. Any comment from the audience? Morning, gentlemen, and one lady. How are you? I'm Debbie Secchio, your friend from Richmond. I'd like to first of all um, say that I'm sorry I missed the beginning of the meeting. There was some confusion this morning in my life. But um, tonight, if any of you are willing to attend this, there is a meeting at First Southern Bank with a speaker. You may have heard of her. Her name is Cindy Arlinghouse. She's a PVA out of Boone County. She will be presenting the dilemma about HB 44, which I believe may have been lost since 1979 or some time around that. She's going to be discussing how that actually states that there's a 4% cap on what the taxing districts can do each year on our tax bills, but she will explain how within that HB 44 there is a loophole that actually allows a compensating tax rate to be added to that or averaged in and how that has actually come about in some of our tax items over the years meaning more than four percent so um, it's going to be very interesting so I am inviting you all to be there 630 at First Southern Bank by Kroger's upstairs um, I also have something else that I consider to be of a very sensitive nature and the reason I'm saying that to you is I'd like to respectfully request some of your time privately. Um, it's a matter that there might be retribution with. And I have not found any authority in our county so far who will look into it or address it. Uh, I think maybe one or two magistrates here might be aware of what I'm talking about. Is this a possibility? Judge Executive? Well, well you any of us will meet with you any time, but... If it's something that involves physical court, you're welcome. Well, I don't know that it does. And what I'm basically looking to is just to say that something's going on in the county and who is the authority that I need to go to because I'm obviously not finding that person. I'd run it by the county attorney. Well, make an appointment with the judge. and Make an appointment, come in, call Francette. Um, anytime you want to come in, I'll be there. I'll um, can the magistrates be there too no because then we have a quorum and that's against the law unless okay we i didn't i'm just i didn't know how that worked if it involves one district or something that magistrate probably could be there could we have two of them. well it's something that can not only affect our county but can affect our entire region that the, we live in the county attorney and the judge needs to hear it first and then they'll inform us i'll be glad to meet with you and talk about 
talk to you about anything you want to talk about. Okay. Do you have your calendar with you? Can I no. talk to you? <laughs> you know, I, I, that's quick. Francette. Okay. She's the woman of Yeah, calendar. you can call the office. <laughs> okay, so. Um, uh, I'll be glad to talk to you about Thank it. you very, very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate all that you all do for our county. Thank you very Thank much. You. And we appreciate you coming in and making comments. Any other discussion? Any other comments from the audience? Kenny? Our buddy, Kenny Davis, is here. I just want to, I, I thank the court for being accessible. I think that, you know, I've never called somebody that didn't get a call back, and I appreciate that. And I also want to say uh, that I appreciate the way that Jerry has handled the transition in his office. There's been some difficulties, we all know that, but he's handled it in a manner that, uh, that represents our county well, I think. And uh, I appreciate that. And I also want to thank Doug Thomas. Uh, Doug has uh, met with him last year. We've been going into the jail on Tuesday nights for almost a year now and uh, having a Bible study. And uh, I think it's beneficial all the way around for all involved. And uh, I, thank, uh, I thank Doug for being sensitive to that. And, uh, allowing us to do that. Myself and another pastor, we alternate. Most of the time we go together, but uh, we, we got, I got two of us because one of us, you know, in the, in the life of a pastor, there's always something going on. But uh, I appreciate that. But I do appreciate this court, and I appreciate your all's accessibility. And like I say, I, I can never remember a time, it may be two or three days, but I always get a call back, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you, what you do for the community. And Doug do, is doing just an excellent job. I have to say it. Uh, if no further comments, a motion to uh, approve the transfers and pay the claims. So moved. Second. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Thank everybody for coming out. We appreciate it. Uh, thank the mayor. We'd love to come to Berea every other month and give the opportunity for people that live over here to come in and uh, talk about things that they've got on their mind. And uh, motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Yes. 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 What it cost you, Doug? Don't run off. Don't run off. I need to see. Free for blue. How you doing?